Welcome back to DXB Today, where we are talking all things habits, good and bad. And our guest joining us here today is Diran Harchandani. He is an international speaker and transformational coach. Diran, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Look, we've been talking all things habit along, alongside Russell here today. From your experience, is habit formation really hard? Yes. And the hardest part about forming a habit is making a new choice. That's the most difficult part about forming a new habit because when you make a new choice, you step into the unknown, the unpredictable, the unfamiliar. Now you're in the river of change and your body is starting to create chemicals that is unfamiliar. And most people pop out when they're in that river, when they're about to go through that change, they pop out because it becomes too much, because they're no longer able to predict what's gonna happen next. And our brains are prediction machines. We're trying to predict all the time what's gonna happen next. And when we're in the predictable past or the familiar past and the predictable future, we know what's gonna happen. Even if we have bad habits, we can predict and we're in the familiar, we're in the predictable, we're in the known. And that's where most people, such as myself, stayed. I lingered in that space mm. longer than I should have. <laughs> Darren, I mean, we're talking a lot about habits on today's show, but it's yes. hard to define what a habit is. So for some people, it's smoking. For some people, it's uh, eating junk food. It, could it also include getting into toxic relationships, for example, something a bit more complex? How would you define a habit? Absolutely. So let me ask you a question. How would you turn a doorknob? By turning it right. Why did you move, use your hands? Because it's a habit. It's a, it's a habit. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's an unconscious, automatic set of thoughts, behaviors, and actions that have been acquired through repetition. You've repeated, you've done it so many times that now the body knows it better than the mind does. And that's a habit. It's yeah, because I had to imitate it to remember which way it went. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and most people will turn you know, use their hands to actually turn from left to right. Yeah. Right? Mm. Yeah. About habits, what have you found when you're working with someone with, with a bad habit and they want to change? What have you found about their own inner voice? Do you find it change? Do you think their inner voice has any effect on if they achieve the result? Or do you think it can be bypassed? A negative inner voice, their self-belief? Yeah, that's... I mean, there's a lot of self-doubt. Right. Can I really make this change? Uh, what are going to be the consequences of this change? Uh, how is it going to impact me? Uh, a lot of habits are tied to our identity. So we're now getting into something that really speaks to our humanity because we've been doing it for so long. Mm. And so there's a lot of self-doubt. There's a lot of negative narrative that basically takes place in our minds when we're going through a change. Sure. What about the process though? I mean, it's a question for you both, I suppose, yeah. but in terms of, I mean, somebody walking, booking an appointment to see you, or somebody walking through the door yeah. to have a sit down and chat is obviously wanting to make a change, but how much do they want to make a change? Is it because they've been told to make a change or is it, or do they have to accept it themselves that, that change is necessary? Tom, that's a great question. Most habits fail and the reason they fail is because we're not doing it for the right reasons. Mm. We're doing it because of an external source that's putting pressure on us, or we're looking for a validation, or we're looking to fit in, or we're looking to align to a societal norm. And that kind of funding, the motivation that we get from external sources, don't last, mm. right? So it has to come from within. Mm. So being really clear, super crystal clear on why we're making that change is really the difference that makes all the difference. So say somebody you love has a bad habit. How do you coax them or force them? Or how do you get them to seek that kind of help? So with someone you love, um, it, it's usually, usually a little more challenging because usually you're part of the problem, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's a fact. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and because when you're part of the problem, then there's, there's an unconscious bias, there's, um, you know, there's an unconscious bias that kicks in. Uh, but to answer your question, it's all about modeling, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's us modeling that kind of change that the other person wants to make. Mm -hmm. And really being as supportive as we can 
in, in the process, but really understanding the process of transformation. What is that process of change and really breaking it down and keeping it as simple as possible? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, books and libraries have, can be filled up on habit formation. The reality is that, you know, we ask everybody here, right? How many people have a habit that they're trying to break or that they're trying to adopt? 99.9% yeah. .9 of the time, everyone's hands go up. Mm -hmm. yeah. We all have a habit that we're trying to break or adopt. Mm. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and Russ, I would love to get your opinion on this because yeah, sure. as we were just talking about, you know, a bad habit doesn't just affect the individual, it affects every single person around them. I'm sure you get approached by family members, uh, you know, on a whole. Yep. They, come in, they come to you to ask for help. What is your approach to, to dealing with that? Okay. Some stories uh, started to open up when, I, when you were talking earlier. And I had a client came in to see me and he wanted to break a habit, I thought, but his wife had sent him in. And I'd worked with his wife when he had a really successful result. And she said, you've got to meet my husband. He has a particular habit and I want him to break it. Mm. Mm. So he came in and his body language, you could just see. Arms are folded, turned away. And I said, are you okay? He said, yes, I'm fine. And I said, uh, so what, what, what do you want to do? Uh, and he said, I, I, well, I want to break this habit that my wife thinks that I've got. <laughs> and I said, OK, <laughs> and what about you? What do you think? And he said, well, I actually quite enjoy the habit. Mm. And I said, OK, um, so why do you want to change? Well, my wife thinks I should. Now, it doesn't matter. You could be the greatest hypnotherapist or coach or life coach in the world. If that person doesn't want to change, that isn't going to happen. Right. So I advised him, uh, let's let's not go forward with this. He insisted we did. Mm -hmm. Well, I might as well give it a try. Yeah. Give it a try. That's <laughs> not the words I want to hear. <laughs> mm. So um, belief is important. When a client says to me, you know what? I want to stop this habit. I'm referring to smoking. I'm sick of it. I've done it for years, there's nothing good about it, it makes me stink, mm. it's poisoning me, I possibly am not going to see my children's children grow up. That's the sort of person that's ready for change and that is where hypnosis can really help. Mm. But if you have a resistant client, then you stand a chance, but you have to negotiate. So you've got to look at the benefits, you've got to look at the consequences, and you've got to find their why. Mm. So you've got to, you've got to dig deep. So you're interviewing them, finding out reasons why to change. If they don't have one, then you've got to talk about finding one mm. or else you're wasting your time. Yeah, wow. Well, this has all been very enlightening. Darren, before we say goodbye, where can people find you? On the website uh, or Instagram? Absolutely. So I'm Darren Harchandani on Instagram and uh, DarrenHarchandani.com on, uh, on the internet. Well, I'll be logging on. Thank you so much for joining us <laughs> Thank today. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Darren. Now, today's spotlight is on Minbar, a studio where research and design intersect to drive meaningful momentum. Here's our spotlight on their founder. My name is Bushra Bedri, an Emirati entrepreneur. I run a design studio called Minbar, and we specialize in branding and the development of visual systems for entrepreneurs. And we also uh, use design as a medium uh, to document and preserve culture. So we work a lot with cultural narratives and visual storytelling. That's pretty much what I do. I think it's, uh, you know, learning to lead a team, navigating through the day-to-day -day operations of you know, running a business and owning a practice um, that is very specific to what we do is the biggest challenge. Uh, I think contributing positively to our creative economy and being part of, the, of its growth. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. I mean, everything. Um, I'm from, I come from Dubai, my business is based in Dubai, I live in Dubai, so uh, the sense of place and the significance that Dubai carries uh, for me on all levels, whether it was feeding into the work that I do um, and everything that comes with it is everything that Dubai means to me. 
Yeah, from habits good and bad to meaningfulness as well. It's all here on the show. And we ain't finished yet. Let's find out what's coming up. We learn about the transformational power of habits. We finally get to reveal our exclusive interview with none other than Raghav. And lots more, so stay tuned.